Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. 45 million Americans have cast their ballots. We have a number of voters. We have the number of voters here in Bear County. A more calm but attack fueled debate. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington with details of the final presidential debate just ahead. And looking out with live cam this morning, it is 75 degrees, uh, pretty much the same of what we've seen all week, but changes are ahead. And a good morning to you. It is Friday. It is October 23rd. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. Very excited about changes. We've been waiting all week, pretty much. Let's get an update. <laughs> Justin is in for Mike today. And what is the very latest as of, as of this early Friday morning? Justin? So we are tracking a cold front right now. It's in the Texas Panhandle. It'll be here this afternoon, guys. It's going to cool us down for tonight and especially as we get into tomorrow. And then there's another cold front behind that that's going to bring some cooler air next week. Right now, 75 degrees. It's still warm and humid out there. 72. Fredericksburg, 70 in Rock Springs, 76 Gonzales. So if you're heading out the door right now, still t-shirt weather. You may want to grab the coat though. You may want it later today once this front moves through. Look at the numbers behind the front. 47 in Lubbock, 40 in Amarillo, and it is moving south. We think it'll be here sometime after lunch. And then with it, we'll get the gusty winds in those cooler temperatures. No rain right now. There could be a couple of showers today with this front. We're not expecting widespread rain though. Rain chances really on the low end. In fact, below 20%. So it's not really a, a good chance as we mentioned. Here's the forecast. Uh, 79 noontime, 83 at 2 o'clock. That's probably about when we reach our high temperature and then we're down into the 60s by 5 o'clock and 8 o'clock. Friday night football, a little chilly and breezy too. The northerly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. Kind of cool tomorrow and then we've got more changes next week. Some decent rain chances to talk about. We're going to jump into all that here in just a little bit. But we got to get over to Nick and checking on the traffic. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Justin. Weather looks great. All right, right now things are looking great traffic wise. A lot of green on the screen there. Talk to my friends at Transguide. All the construction is clear, so that's a good start for Friday morning. So let's go straight to Transguide here. 35 and 37 looking smooth as can be right now. 90 and 36 looking great. Both east and westbound lanes look good there. And we'll do one more here. 35 and 1103 in shirts. That looks great too. Mark Zeff, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Police and Crime Stoppers looking for your help in identifying two suspects who robbed a store clerk on the city's north side. Now, this happened nine days ago at an Exxon gas station off of Interstate 35 and Eisenhower Road on the northeast side. Now, police say the clerk was taking a video with his phone of the shoplifting suspect who left then drove up to confront the clerk. Officers say a woman took a gun from the man and shot once towards the clerk. That gunshot missed the clerk, but it did hit the clerk's car that was next to her. If you can help police find the pair of suspects, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at number 210-224-STOP. Now to the very latest on the coronavirus pandemic here at home in Bear County. Health officials reporting another increase in hospitalizations. There are currently 209 COVID patients in the hospital. That is a rise of 9, 89 in ICU, 42 on ventilators. There are 207 new COVID-19 cases. Good news, though, slight drop on our seven-day average, which is now 168. No new deaths are reported during Thursday's daily briefing. President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden clashed again last night in their second and final presidential debate. And by all accounts, it was a more conventional debate than the Canada's chaotic first meeting. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with a breakdown of the key moments. The final presidential debate opening with one of the biggest issues facing this country, a virus that's ravaged the economy and killed more than 222,000 Americans in just seven months. I say we're learning to live with it. We have no choice. We can't lock ourselves up in a basement like Joe does. People are learning to die with it. Anyone who's responsible for that many deaths should not remain as president of the United States of America. The president defending his handling of the pandemic while painting a rosy picture at odds with what the data shows. It will go away. And as I say, we're rounding the turn. We're rounding the corner. And we're about to go into a dark winter, a dark winter. And he has no clear plan. The relatively calmer debate, noticeably low on interruptions, but just as high on attacks. We have to provide health insurance for people at an affordable rate, and that's what I do. <laughs> he was now there as vice president for eight years. He didn't do anything. He didn't do it. He wants socialized medicine. President well, he's Biden a very confused response. guy. He thinks he's running against somebody else. This is the guy who's tried to cut 
Medicare. On the economy, Trump insisting he's better for the job. If he gets in, you will have a depression the likes of which you've never seen. Your 401ks will go to hell. What is on the ballot here is the character of this country. In their closing arguments, Trump telling voters economic success will unify the nation. Biden saying, if elected, he would represent every American and address systemic racism. I think I have great relationships with all people. I am the least racist person in this room. Abraham Lincoln here is one of the most racist presidents we've had in modern history. He pours fuel on every single racist fire. And both candidates are back on the campaign trail today. Joe Biden will be stumping in Delaware while Trump heads to Florida. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. The final presidential debate, traditionally an opportunity for voters to decide who they will support. But for many Americans, it's a decision that's already been made. As of yesterday, 45 million people have cast their ballots. The 2008 election holds the record for highest turnout with 62 percent of people voting. Many election experts think this political season is on track to break that record. And here in the Alamo City, a few thousand less voters turning out to the polls than Wednesday. More than 34,000 <laughs> ballots cast in person yesterday. It brings the total to 360,529. More than 62,000 mail-in ballots have been received this week. If you haven't voted yet, the clock is ticking. Early voting period ends next week. Otherwise, you have to wait till Election Day right now. On KSAT.com, you can find your nearest polling location. They are open 8 to 8 through tomorrow. Early voting ends October 30th. Election Day is November 3rd. Time now is 436 and 75 degrees. A four-year-old deposition of Jelaine Maxwell has been released. We have the latest details in our case still ahead in this morning's GMA First Look. The financial company Morgan Stanley will be covering tuition for 60 students. We're going to have the details on why and who's getting that next on GMSA. And we get more details on temperature fluctuations due to a couple of cold fronts in South Texas. When will they be here and how chilly will it get around here? It's about time. We'll be right back. In your other morning headlines, what's believed to be the first lawsuit against Pacific Gas and Electric filed for causing the Zog fire in California. The claim is a complaint for property damage and personal injuries. The client is an Igo family who were forced to flee the fire. That fire killed four people and destroyed 200 structures in the Igo Ono area of Shasta County, California. On October 9th, Cal Fire took possession of PG&E equipment as part of their investigation. Morgan Stanley is providing 60 full-ride scholarships at historically black colleges and universities. The financial giant announced a $12 million academic program this week as part of an industry effort to get minority students more interested in banking careers and to close the wealth gap. The needs-based scholarships will go to students attending Howard University, Morehouse College, and Spelman College. Morgan Stanley says it will also provide students with career counseling support and training opportunities within the bank. And time now is 441 and 75 degrees. Actor Sasha Baron Cohen back for the anticipated Borat sequel. We have a preview of the film that's out today still ahead. And the University of the Incarnate Word is expanding its campus next on GMSA. We have the details on the new changes and its purpose. A four-year-old deposition of Jeffrey Epstein friend Jelaine Maxwell has been released despite Maxwell's legal challenges. It shows Maxwell denying being part of the sexual abuse of teenage girls. ABC's Adrian Bankert has more in this morning's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, after months of fighting to keep depositions sealed this morning, newly unsealed testimony gives a glimpse of what Ghislaine Maxwell said under oath in 2016, repeatedly denying any knowledge or participation in convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein's alleged sexual abuse of teenage girls. Barry Levine, author of The Spider, Inside the Criminal Web of Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell, has been investigating the allegations at the heart of these cases and says Epstein needed the help of someone like Maxwell to earn the trust of his alleged victims. They were able to present themselves, uh, particularly to young women and their families, um, in the sense that they appeared as a loving young couple. We'll have much more on these depositions coming up at 7 a.m. Plus, Dan Abrams weighs in live. With your GMA First Look, I'm Adrian Bankert, ABC News, New York.
Back here at home, University of the Incarnate Word expanding its campus in a medically underserved community on the south side. It's one of the many new additions coming to what used to be Brooks Air Force Base. UIW will now occupy seven buildings covering 23 and a half acres at Brooks. The School of Osteopathic Medicine has been at Brooks for more than four years. Second year med student Andrew Tobias is excited about the changes. I am so excited to see when our school just continues to grow and we continue to make these connections in the south side. Brooks is growing in other industries as well. It's home to over 40 businesses and tenants as of uh, yet. Currently, there are over 6,000 jobs in the Brooks area. There is about 350 acres available for development and residents are excited to see what the city will bring next. Flu season is here, which means it's time for flu shots. KSET is teaming up with our community partners for several drive through flu events. The first happening tomorrow at Southwest ISD Stadium from 8 a.m. until 12 p.m. You will need to make an appointment and most major insurance plans will be accepted. Now, for more information, you can head over to our website at KSET.com. 446 on your Friday morning. How are we looking, Officer Solis? Mark, we're looking great right now. No construction, no traffic out there. If you're off to work this early on Friday morning, expect a smooth ride. Things are looking good. Very little heavy pockets of traffic. Maybe there on 35 North going to I-10. But other than that, things look good uh, right now outside. All right, trans guide time. Here we go. 37 and 35 again. That's looking good. Same downtown. 90 and 36 on the west side. Look at that. Uh, free sale in there and we'll do one more here 35 at 1103 in shirts that looks really good as well good for friday thank yep. you nick thank you nick uh, justin i know we're facing a couple of cool downs what's the latest this morning on the thinking regarding any potential rainfall uh, it's looking better next week, Mark. So I think by the time we get into Tuesday and Wednesday, we're going to be dealing with some pretty decent rainfall chances. It's going to be light rain, but rain nonetheless and rain that we can use. 75 degrees right now, south southeast chilly winds and cloudy skies here in San Antonio. It's still pretty humid, right? Uh, we're going to lose this humidity. We're going to lose some of this warmth we've been dealing with as a cold front slides through a little bit later this afternoon. Numbers right now, 75 in San Antonio, 76 in Pleasanton, but let's go north. There are the important numbers. Shows that that cool air is headed our way. 40 in Amarillo, 47 right now in Lubbock, and just starting to transition there, Wichita Falls, 63. As we look at the rainfall, there is a little bit of rain with this front, not much. And I think as the front makes it down into our area, there's just not going to be enough energy to get showers and storms going. There could be a couple of showers. We certainly can't rule it out, but it's not going to be significant rainfall, at least today. Uh, as far as dew points go, yeah, they'll fall off. That's good because it has been so humid. We've got dew points in the 30s now in the Texas Panhandle. And that drier air will slide down a little bit later tonight. We're still dealing with dew point in the 70s right now, so it is still sticky if you're heading outside or going out for that morning run right now. Uh, as far as wind goes, we start off with pretty light winds, but uh, we fast forward now to 3 o'clock as that front starts to move in. There you see the wind picking up. We're going to see some gusts, I think, up around 30 miles per hour out of the north. So uh, if you have evening plans tonight, just know it is going to be breezy. It's going to be gusty in some cases. And we'll see those winds for the most part stay up overnight and then start to decrease as we get into tomorrow. We mentioned the rain. It's just not much there. This computer model generates a little bit east to San Antonio. And as the front sinks south, maybe a little bit more along the coast. I just don't think we're going to see uh, any sort of measurable rain really here around town. So here's what the forecast looks like temperature wise. We climb all the way to about 2 o'clock. We're up around 83, 84 degrees, and then it falls off once that front comes through. So we'll see those temperatures dip into the 70s and even 60s by 6 and 8 o'clock. It turns breezy. Friday night football is going to be a little bit chilly. Okay, let's go forward in time now. We have our first front here. As we get into Sunday, warm air comes back. So Sunday is going to be a warm day. Here's the next front. That drops south. Behind it, cooler air once again. But this time, we have a cutoff low or area of low pressure off to our west. And that's going to enhance our rain chances behind this front. We're going to get the overrunning. So it'll be cloudy and cool and somewhat damp, especially as we get into Tuesday and the first part of Wednesday of next week. It'll be jacket weather, I think. And You'll need the umbrella too. It's just good to see rain back in the forecast. So this is what the seven day forecast looks like. 10% chance today, 68 tomorrow with cloudy skies to start. Maybe a little bit of clearing late in the day. 85 Sunday, 20% chance of showers on Monday. And then a 40% chance of rain Tuesday and Wednesday. Notice the temperatures will be in the 60s. If the clouds are a little thicker, we get some better colder air coming in from the north. Those numbers may go down a little bit. 
Uh, but uh, yes, some rain chances. This is the first time in a long time we've had a 40% chance of rain in the seven day forecast. And that second shot of colder air does seem to stick around a little bit longer. It does. Uh, we should start to clear out hopefully uh, Wednesday afternoon. Okay. Yep. Thanks, Thanks Justin. Great. 10 till right now, 75 degrees. And Elton John is teaming up with Mattel for the release of a new Barbie. Next on GMSA, we're going to take a look. Big three numbers, 475 Fireball 7, daily four numbers, a 0860 Fireball 5. Cash 5, 6, 16, 20, 26, 34. Your Texas two step, 9, 17, 19, 23. Bonus ball 1. Well, there are plenty of things to watch this weekend, from the much-anticipated Borat sequel to Bill Murray's new movie, On the Rocks. And for the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. What do you say, Rez? No, it's not me. No shortage of new stuff to watch this weekend. The Borat sequel, probably among the most anticipated. Sasha Baron Cohen is back as the title character, causing chaos. That's on Amazon. On Apple TV Plus, it's the Bruce Springsteen doc, Letter to You, which gives you an in-studio view of the making of his latest album, which is also out today. And Bad Hair is a horror comedy on Hulu that was one of the most talked about films this year at Sundance. Happy Thanksgiving. Available for streaming rental, it's Friendsgiving, about a chaotic Thanksgiving celebration where almost nothing goes right, except for the food. Star Aisha Tyler talked to me about her favorite dish on the holiday table. Oh, well, my mom makes my mom makes candied yams, which I think is the black version of sweet potato casserole. <laughs> and that's my favorite thing. It has like two pounds of butter in it, and the edges are all crispy and caramelized. Uh, so that is my favorite thing. One other buzzworthy movie out today, On the Rocks, reteams Bill Murray and writer-director Sofia Coppola. He plays a dad helping his daughter find out if her husband is cheating. That's on Apple TV+. Plus. An iconic 90s album turns 25 today, the Smashing Pumpkins alt-rock opus, Melancholy, and the Infinite Sadness. The double album, released October 23rd, 1995, debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 album chart and has sold more than 10 million copies in the US. And happy birthday, Deadpool. Actor Ryan Reynolds is 44 today, while the mother of dragons, Game of Thrones star Amelia Clark is 34. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Two pop culture icons, Elton John and Barbie, are teaming up on a collector's doll. The singer is joining Mattel to create his very own Barbie doll. The launch has been thoughtfully timed with the 45th anniversary of John's legendary 1975 Dodger Stadium concert. The Barbie herself is dressed in classic Elton John style with platform boots and pink tinted glasses. The Elton John Barbie is available now on Walmart.com. 456, 75 degrees. And do you want to start eating healthier but worried it's too expensive? We're going to have some cheap and healthy options for you still ahead on GMSA. Walmart may be trying to head off a lawsuit by filed, uh, filed by one of its own. We have details on the litigation. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. 76,000 new COVID-19 cases reported yesterday in the U.S. More on what doctors are saying about virus hotspots across the country. And taking a look out with live cam this morning, it's a slightly humid 75 degrees, but we are looking forward to that to change today, actually. And morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us. It's Friday, October 23rd. We are very excited about today's cool down and then one later. That's right, a one two punch of cold fronts. Let's get the latest now from meteorologist Justin Horn. The anticipation is killing us. Let me get out of the way there. The state of Texas. Uh, <laughs> it's important here that we look at the numbers across Texas because it tells us exactly where that cold front is. Amarillo at 38 degrees. Lubbock's at 46, but we're still in the 70s. So that front just south of Lubbock right now, it's making some headway off to the south. It'll be here by early afternoon, and it brings about some pretty good changes tonight. You'll see those numbers fall off. Some gusty winds, breezy winds, uh, maybe some gusts up to around 30 miles per hour this evening. The radar doesn't give us much. We've got a couple showers down there along the coast. And if we see anything today, it's going to be generally pretty light. We're not uh, looking for any big accumulations or anything like that, but there is a 10% chance of rain in the forecast. Temperatures right now, 72. Burning stage, 75. Canyon Lake, 77. In New Braunfels, 72. In Bandera, and 73 right now down there in Stinson. So it's still a warm, humid start. But we do think 
uh, that it gets much, much better this afternoon. So here's what the forecast looks like. 83 by 2 o'clock. That's probably when we peak. Then those northerly winds kick in 10 to 20 and temperatures fall off into the 60s tonight. Mostly cloudy at 5 o'clock, 67 and then down to 61, probably falling into the 50s by tomorrow morning. Saturday is going to be a little bit cooler. And we have some pretty decent rain chances in our seven day forecast, so a lot to look at. We're going to get to that in just a few minutes, but let's get over to Officer Nick Solis for the look at your traffic this morning. Thanks, Justin. Right now, not dealing with any accidents, uh, very little construction to no construction, apparently. Uh According to my friends at TransGuide, so things look good out here right now. Let's go straight to drive times. All right, eastbound 151, 1604 to 90, nine minutes. And if you're eastbound 90 from 1604 to 35, you got an 11 minute ride. Things are looking good on 151 and 90. All right, 1604 and Kyle still looks good. 1604 at Military Drive, not a car on the roadway there. So if you're heading that way, but we're expect a smooth ride. And 1604 at Old Hausman, ah, that looks smooth, very smooth. Mark Steph, back to you. Fantastic news. Thank you very much, Nick. More than 1,100 deaths from coronavirus were reported across the country yesterday alone. And 76,000 new cases were reported. That's one of the highest daily totals so far. And even though rural areas are seeing faster growth rates in cases per capita, one big city is making a big decision. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. This morning, hot spots across the country, bringing hospitals to the brink. I have great fears that we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg. Despite remdesivir's newly approved status as a COVID treatment, doctors say many patients are still ending up critically ill. For the first time as a physician, I'm scared to see what's to come. In Utah, ICUs filling up with COVID patients as the state sees a record number of new cases. I don't know what else we could do other than the plan we have here now. In Ohio, the governor says infections are reaching new highs every day. What is most scary about this is that it does not seem like we're even starting to get to a plateau. It just goes up and up. In El Paso, Texas, daily cases, they're spiking nearly 450% since October 1st. We're seeing it in children. Meanwhile, schools in the east are battling new outbreaks. More than 200 students and teachers in Massachusetts tested positive for the virus in the last week. I was really nervous, but like mostly for like the blood test. It comes as Pfizer becomes the only company to include children in its phase three vaccine testing. 12-year-old Abinov receiving his first injection of either vaccine or placebo. For me, um, I think that it's like pretty cool to like participate in this like research study. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. In your other consumer headlines, if you have a refinance in the past year, you may want to start thinking about it. Mortgage rates have dipped to a new low for the 11th time this year. Now they're at the lowest point they've been since Freddie Mac started tracking rates almost 50 years ago. The national average for a fixed 30-year rate mortgage is 2.8%, and for a 15-year, it's 23 the home prices are up an average of 15% over last year as the inventory of available homes continues to drop. Walmart may be trying to head off a lawsuit over the opioid epidemic by filing one of its own. The Wall Street Journal says the world's biggest retailer is preemptively suing the Department of Justice, asking a judge to declare the government has no basis to demand civil damages for Walmart pharmacists filling prescriptions for opioids. Walmart was among six pharmacies to go to trial in November, but it was delayed due to the pandemic. Well, back here at home, anyone in the Alamo City needed anything printed after World War II came to Mungia Printers over on Buena Vista. Its owner, Romulo Mungia, was an outspoken advocate for his community. Many who, like him, had fled the Mexican Revolution. How his grandson is helping make this possible. Jesse Degollado talks to Henry Cisneros about the plans his business partnership has for his grandfather's old print shop on the city's historic west side. The boy holding his little sister's hand outside their grandfather's print shop this be your office. is former mayor Henry Cisneros inside that same building that's under renovation. The Munguia print shop built in 1949 by Don Romulo Munguia, Cisneros' maternal grandfather, will become the shop, a 7,400 square foot complex, including what had been a medical clinic next door. Total cost, $1.7 million. 
part of it housing a Cisnetos partnership of national investment firms. The idea to move them here, he says, came while he was in his office on the river wall. And just decided, you know what makes most sense is for us to put our money where our mouth is and come to the west side ourselves. It's an improvement for the neighborhood and I think it's gonna do well. Way overdue, says Garza, who lives next door to the west side landmark. You know, we need more businesses like that. We don't need no more tire shops or taquerias. Far from it. Upstairs will be a research library for economics, government policy and more, named for Cisneros' parents. Office space elsewhere for nonprofit educational groups and others. Cisneros says the west side, within a few minutes of downtown, doesn't need the kind of development that'll crowd out the people who live and work there. But I think it's possible to thread the needle and have more investment in one of the poorest parts of the city. This, he says, is a commitment not only to this building and his family's legacy, but to what we can do over the years contributing to the development of the one place on the compass that hasn't developed. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. And to learn more about Henry Cisneros' grandfather, Romulo Mungia, in his own words, we have the link to his oral history on our website at KSAT.com. 506, 75 degrees on your Friday. And a California court has ruled that Lyft and Uber drivers need to be classified as employees. More on that ruling still ahead. Want to start eating healthier but worried it'll break the bank? Next, we'll show you the top five superfoods you can buy on your next trip to the grocery store that costs less than a dollar per serving. And taking a look at the live cam this morning, a slightly humid start to your day, but things are changing. We're excited about that. If you've been waiting for that cool front, it's going to happen. We're going to be back to check with Justin. And welcome back, it's 510. So are you sick of both the Democrats and Republicans? Einstein Brothers has a third party for you. It's called the Party Bagel. These sweet treats are suitable for celebrations. The only thing they share with traditional bagels is the shape. They're actually donuts. So Party Bagels hit select locations November around the country. And November 12th, one variety called the Churro is stuffed with cream cheese, buttercream frosting, and coated with cinnamon sugar. Mmm, and now we have to talk about <laughs> healthy stuff? Exactly. That now, was a horrible segue. I'm just kidding. Now let's switch. So eating healthy, by the way, can be expensive, which is why many resort to lower quality food and even fast food options. But nutritionists say doing so can quickly lead to health problems like obesity, high blood pressure, and heart attack. There are several foods that are super healthy and cost next to nothing. So according to eatingwell.com, here's a look at five of the top superfoods you can buy on a budget. Okay, here we go. First up, peanut butter. At a cost of just 54 cents a serving, peanut butter is not only tasty, gives your body some of the same benefits as tree nuts like almonds or coconuts, which are generally more expensive. And it's full of polyunsaturated fats, which are heart healthy. It's also a natural source of zinc and vitamin E. Just make sure to use natural peanut butter to avoid too much added sugar or oils. Number two, kale. Don't knock it till you try it. Put it in a nice super salad and you'll enjoy the benefits. And at the cost of about 69 cents per serving, nutritionists say one cup of kale cooked has about 10 times the daily value of vitamin K, which is essential to bone health. It also has lots of vitamins, which helps your vision. Number three, tuna. Sure, more expensive fish like salmon are high in vitamins, but your standard can of tuna can also deliver a big portion of omega-3s at 96 cents a serving. It can lower blood pressure and reduce the likelihood of heart attack and stroke. Just watch out for mercury intake. Nutritionists say look for chunk light tuna rather than white albacore tuna. And number four, oranges. About a dollar serving. Nutritionists say you can get your entire day's worth of vitamin C in just a single orange. But don't substitute for orange juice. That's because oranges also have fiber. You also get another boost in your vision health thanks to beta carotene. All right, and then number five, eggs at a cost of 19 cents a serving, which is one egg you get tons of vitamins that can lower your risk of eye diseases like macular degeneration. And of course, they are extremely versatile and can be scrambled, boiled, and even made into a healthy omelet. It's a great choice right now for breakfast time. Mm. Yeah.
So the next time you think about going through the drive-thru, think about these healthy and cheap alternatives you can enjoy instead. I, I know most people would try those things. They just can't go the kale route yet. <laughs> they just can't handle it. <laughs> that includes my daughter. It, I, it, I, you know, I put a little off to the side right. and I notice that it, it stays there all the time. Yeah, it's a leafy green. Some of it just can't quite yeah. stomach. Yeah, I agree. 513, <laughs> 75 degrees. And fans of Everybody Loves Raymond, listen up. The cast of it is going to reunite for a good cause. We're going to have the details still ahead. Google adding tools to a shopping platform next on GMSA. Details on how it will help users looking for the best deals. Think, uh, oh. You know what I think? I think you owe us forty-eight fifty. Wild thing. If you ride, you get it. Geico Motorcycle. Fifteen minutes could save you fifteen percent or more. Age before beauty? Why not both? Visibly diminished wrinkled skin in just two days. New Crate Corrector Lotion, only from Gold Bond. Champion your skin. Okay, everyone. Our mission is to provide complete balanced nutrition for strength and energy. Woo! Great tasting and sure. With 9 grams of protein, 27 vitamins and minerals, and nutrients to support immune health. 516, Uber and Lyft have been dealt a legal setback in a fight over how drivers can be classified. ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, a legal setback for Uber and Lyft. The companies must classify their drivers as employees, not independent contractors. That's the ruling of a California appeals court backing up a lower court's decision. The companies can now appeal to California's Supreme Court. Just in time for the holiday season, new tools on Google's shopping platform will allow shoppers to know if they're getting the best deal possible. You'll also be able to track product prices and receive an alert when bigger discounts are available. And Sony's PlayStation 5 will come with some entertainment apps preloaded in the console along with an optional remote control. The remote includes dedicated launch buttons for Disney+. Plus. Netflix, Spotify, and YouTube. The remote will also work with compatible TVs. The PlayStation 5 debuts next month. I think I'm still happy with my PlayStation 2. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Just learned so much about Mona. I know. We didn't realize she was a gamer. <laughs> She's well, a gamer. Sort of. <laughs> now we know what she does on part of her weekends. 517, Nick, how are you looking, sir, as far as traffic goes? Oh, I was talking about me, Mark. I feel like I look okay. But all right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> is, all right, here we go. A lot of green on the screen, but we do have one accident. This is going to be eastbound IH10 uh, at Nieto Drive. This is the eastbound IH10 East, just past 1604 there. It looks like we have a two vehicle accident where a vehicle is rolled over. SAPD is on scene, but you can already see it's causing some traffic build up there. Traffic's heavy to moderate going uh, eastbound I-10 past 1604. Keep that in mind if you have to head that direction. All right, Trans Guide right now. 10 in Callahan looking good. I-10 at Woodlawn on the other side is I-10. That looks great there on the west side. And 35 at Topper Wine. That's looking very smooth on the north side. Sharp dressed man in that uniform. Ah, oh, thank you, Michael. Yes, You're looking welcome. very nice. Also looking nice are Justin Horn uh, and Justin. you, Mark. Thank, thank you. you very much. Yeah. Justin got a haircut. He uh, will pass inspection this morning. Oh, well, thank <laughs> you. Yeah, I feel a little more aerodynamic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We've got uh, uh, football games tonight. I I've always wanted to try this here at the Cube. Let's see if we can yep. go ahead. Yeah, you can do it. Oh! That's awesome. Now go back and look where you hit it. It doesn't matter. It, it would worked never out. go through. But I'll take 64 degrees at uh, kickoff tonight. Winds will be out of the north at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Halftime 61. So it's going to be chillier. Keep that in mind. Grab the coat. You may want to grab a blanket. If you're going out to some of those games, sunset will be around 655. That cold front expected early afternoon, and that's when uh, things will start to cool down. Right now, we've got 75 at the airport, 77 New Braunfels, 72 Kerrville, some 60s up in the Edwards Plateau, but the, the really cold stuff's up here in the Panhandle, 46 right now, Lubbock, 38 in Amarillo, and that is that front that is progressing southward. Uh, should be through Abilene Midland here pretty soon. And again, we're thinking 2 or 3 o'clock this afternoon for when this front will pass through uh, San Antonio. There is some rain with this front. You get uh, some showers and storms up here around the Red River and Dallas-Fort Worth. But I think as the front makes its way south, it's just not going to generate as much rain here. We don't have as much uh, energy to work with. So 
Uh, and there is a chance for shower. It's just on the low end. 75 at the airport right now, 73 stints and 75 Kelly. We've got a southeasterly breeze. All of it pretty light. Still continues to drag in a lot of moisture, though. Dew points in the 70s, even mid 70s in some cases. Uh, Gonzalez at the 75, so it's sticky out there. But we're going to put this humidity, we're going to kick it out of here, and uh, we'll see those numbers really tumble uh, later today with the front, too. As far as wind speeds go, they'll pick up once the front comes by. We're thinking uh, gusts up to 30 miles per hour. Sustained winds for sure, 10 to 20 miles per hour. Uh, so it definitely will be breezy. And we mentioned the rain. This computer model just doesn't generate much rain at all. This is around 4 o'clock. Maybe a couple showers out to the east of San Antonio. And there could be a little sh a shower activity along the coast as the front makes it there. But behind the front, we will see cloud cover. And this cloud cover is going to stick around through uh, a large portion of the day tomorrow. And that's going to keep things pretty chilly on your Saturday. So the forecast for today, we take those temperatures up to about 83 for a high. Front comes through and then we see the numbers drop off pretty quickly. 74 at 4 o'clock and then down to 65 by 6 o'clock and 61 by the 8 o'clock hour. As we go forward in time, here's our first front and uh, things warm up on Sunday. Here comes the next front. It's scheduled for Monday, probably early in the day on Monday. And behind that, we'll get cloudy skies, but a little better chance of rain with this next system. We'll have an upper level low off to the west. This is going to enhance our rain chances, especially Tuesday into early Wednesday. And I think this period has the potential to be cloudy, cool and somewhat damp. We certainly could use the rain. It's going to feel more fall like and then uh, this will get out of here by Wednesday or at least late on Wednesday, we think, and then early Thursday, 68 Saturday, 85 Sunday. There's our next front. 20% chance of rain Monday, 40% chance of rain Tuesday and Wednesday breezy and temperatures are in the 60s. So it's starting to feel more like fall. At least it's starting to look that way in the seven day forecast, guys. Thanks, Justin. I-21, 75 degrees at San Antonio International Airport. And coming up, we have a first look of Tom Hanks, a new movie there called News of the World. This week, it marks this year's annual Stretch Your Mutt Day. And CNN's Rick Damagella talked with actress Lauren Ash about it in the Hollywood Minute. Good boy. Good boy, Harvey. Saturday is Strut Your Mutt Day. Superstore actress Lauren Ash is this year's hey, spokesperson for the event. I actually rescued Fox from a best friend's super adoption event. I think that would have been six years ago. Isn't that right, Fox? Six? Yeah, I think it's about six years ago. Um, and so it was around that time that I learned more about Best Friends Animal Society. The biggest thing for me is they have a huge movement to make the country no kill within the next few years. Proceeds support the Best Friends Animal Society or the animal welfare organization of your choice. <laughs> the cast of Everybody Loves Raymond is reuniting for the International Myeloma Foundation's 14th annual comedy celebration. For me, it's like seeing your kids all play together again. It's very sweet. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's been a while, 15 years since the show went off the air. And these are favorite scenes. You're not just seeing one scene, you're seeing a bunch of scenes that they're going to read together. And we're shocked at how well it holds up. The reunion takes place at comedy.myeloma.org at 9 p.m. Eastern and supports the Peter Boyle Research Fund. Ladies and gentlemen, these are stories of men and women very much like you, waiting for better days to come. Here's a first look at Tom Hanks in News of the World. Hanks plays a veteran traveling from town to town as a storyteller who embarks on reuniting an abducted girl with her family. News of the World arrives Christmas Day. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Hopefully arrives Christmas Day. Oh, I know, everything else has been delayed. Then bumped 527, 75 degrees. And frustrations are growing at the Bear County Courthouse over not being able to hold in-person hearings. Why a local attorney says if bars are allowed to reopen, so should courtrooms. President Trump and former Vice President Biden clashed again last night in their second and final debate. We have a recap next on GMSA. Hello, good morning, happy Friday. It is Friday, October 23rd. Well, some people wash their vehicles to help rain uh -huh. chances improve. <laughs> Do you wear a jacket to make uh, it get colder? No, no, uh, close, you're on the right track. <laughs> okay. Justin, I bought firewood yesterday. Oh, okay. okay. That's, a, that's a great sign. Uh, I think we got some good news for you, okay? We've got, we got a front today, a front next week. 
We're going to get some colder air in here. It's not going to be winter like air, but at least it drops down into the 60s. We think for highs and we'll get some northerly winds. It's going to feel a little bit more like fall. This week has been pretty miserable with the heat and humidity. Uh, we are seeing a little bit of fog right now, by the way, down towards Beeville and Victoria. Visibility is starting to drop off a little bit there. No issues here in San Antonio, though. We don't expect much when it comes to fog. No rain either. It looks like we've got a couple of light returns just east of Victoria, but other than that, it's pretty quiet. There is the chance for a shower or two today. Rain chances are on the low end, though. As we zoom out here and look to the north, there is rain along a front that stretches from about Lubbock over to uh, Dallas, Oklahoma City, and this front is headed our way. I think the bigger story with this front is going to be the gusty winds. Right now, winds are gusting the 37 in Lubbock and Amarillo out of the north. That's what we have to look forward to. Maybe not quite that strong, but gusts up around 30 this afternoon. So let's talk timing here. When does this front get here? Probably early afternoon, 2, 3 o'clock later today. We'll peak at about 2 o'clock. Temperatures in the 80s, but once the front comes through, those numbers start tumbling. We're down to 67 at 5 o'clock and then 61 at 8 o'clock. Again, a slight chance of rain and northerly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. Uh, no rain on the roads this morning. It seems like it's been pretty quiet, Nick. Is there anything popping up now? No, well, just uh, one accident we have. we've been working on, Justin. It's going to be eastbound I 10 East at Nieto Drive. This is going to be right there on the east side of I-10, just east of 1604. It's a two-vehicle accident where that one vehicle was rolled over. You can already see it's causing heavy to moderate traffic buildup right there from 1604 going eastbound and continuing on I-10. Keep that in mind if you're heading in this direction. All right, trans guide time. 410 and 151 looking good right now. Traffic picking up just a little bit, but it's not bad. 1604 at Calabria and Animal Ranch. That looks pretty good. Uh, smooth there. And 281 in Winding Way. That southbound lane looks okay for now, but you know around 6 a.m. it starts getting a little clogged up. Well, everyone, please get to work safely. Make sure you wear that seat belt and uh, go the speed limit. Mark, Stephanie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. New this morning, a crash on the far northeast side overnight has left a motorcyclist dead. It also gave a couple in their home quite a scare. Police say the biker crashed right through their front door on Delinta Road near Nacogdoches Road. Our Katrina Weber is there now with a live report. Now, Katrina, how did this all happen? Well, we can only assume what happened, but I can tell you that this street right here uh, is a dead end right here at Delente, and it appears that the motorcyclist may have been here and then gone straight into the house. Now, the first thing that the people realized was uh, about midnight when they found a motorcycle in their kitchen. I want to show you some video so that you can see the damage. Uh, they told police that it appears this motorcycle came right through their front door, went through an AC closet, and then landed in their kitchen. Unfortunately, the motorcyclist did die as a result of this crash, but that couple got quite a surprise when they saw him land in their kitchen. Uh, quite a bit of damage uh, outside. It's really hard to see in the dark, but there is uh, quite a bit of damage outside, including the front door, which is now boarded up. Uh, and so police did investigate, and they wrapped up their investigation here, but it appears that this couple does have some repairs to make as a result of this crash overnight. Reporting live on the far northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Judge Nelson Wolf has issued an executive order which allowed hundreds of bars in Bear County to reopen. This is under additional health and safety requirements. Wolf says 425 bars out of about 3,000 have remained closed, but so far only 25 have opted to open, while others say their doors may be closed for good. Frank Uresti says his dream became a reality when he opened Frankly Diablos off of Roosevelt Avenue near East Mitchell five years ago. But he closed the bar for good in mid-July and says he doesn't see it ever reopening. It got to the point where it was just, we just couldn't do it anymore. We tried to do it as best as we could. Nobody wants to see a door closed, but I mean, another shall open. I mean, we just got to see where it leads. Bear County commissioners approved a $4 million grant that will go towards the area's hard hit bar and restaurant industry. You can head over to our website at KSAT.com for more information. Two other headlines this morning. There were more than 1,100 COVID-19 related deaths in the U.S. on Wednesday. That's the first time in nearly a month that fatalities rose above 1,000. And medical experts say the pandemic's grip on the country isn't easing. CNN's John Lawrence reports. 
Health experts say COVID-19 cases are rising across the United States. Places like Indiana, Utah, Wisconsin, North Dakota are already reporting that their hospitals are reaching capacity. More than 30 states are seeing week-to-week new cases rise in the past week, while only one, Hawaii, is seeing them fall. It does not seem like we're even starting to get to a plateau. The number of confirmed cases in the U.S. is doubling roughly every three months, and the White House's coronavirus task force is warning about surges in areas like the Sun Belt, the Midwest, and northern states. Make no mistake about this. This is an urgent crisis. Some progress is being made. Moderna's president says its COVID-19 vaccine is on track to be on the market by December, and the antiviral drug Remdesivir from Gilead Sciences is approved by the FDA to treat COVID-19 patients. It's the only approved drug But it's not sort of the home run, I think, that a lot of people wanted in terms of actually increasing survival. As research continues, Americans are reminded to be cautious and avoid the so-called COVID fatigue. There's some very difficult times that are ahead of us, and we have to hunker down and get ready for the winter. I'm John Lawrence reporting. And according to a report from disaster preparedness experts at Columbia University, the government's poor response to the pandemic appears to have led to anywhere from 130,000 to 210,000 preventable deaths. Other stories we're following for you this morning. President Trump and former Vice President Biden squared off in the final presidential debate last night. A much different scene, much more conventional from the first debate. They covered a range of topics from COVID to immigration and many others. We have a complete recap a little later in the newscast. And right now on our website, we have a fact check on claims made by both candidates. Just head to KSAT.com and look for this story right there on our homepage. Also on our website, Steve Spreacher spoke with Trinity University visiting professor and political scientist Juan Sepulveda last night. They talked about many things, including electoral votes. There are 538 electoral votes spread throughout the United States. According to poll analysis, Pennsylvania will most likely be the tipping state. That's the state that will most likely lead to the presidency. Sepulveda says Florida is extremely important for the Trump campaign. You can see the entire interview on KSAT.com. Some University of Texas at Austin students are refusing to sing the Eyes of Texas or what it stands for. That's because they say it has links to racist undertones. Longhorn Band reportedly refused to play the song this week, and many in the band say they won't play it again. The song was written in 1903, and it was sung to the tune of I've Been Working on the Railroad. It has been a sore subject for minority students for decades. The title is taken from a saying of a former school president who had mimicked remarks by Confederate General Robert E. Lee. The administration says the song will stay, but players are not required to sing it. You can read more about this story on our website at KSAT.com. 538, 75 degrees. And a dad in Iowa has become an expert on video calls. Now he has invented some Halloween costumes for her daughter's Zoom calls. We're going to take a look still ahead on GMSA. Jury trials remain on hold due to the pandemic, leaving remote hearings Uh, often the only option for resolving cases. Next on GMSA, more on what defense attorneys and their clients are saying. And taking a look out with live cam this morning, it is a humid 75 degrees, but we're excited about the changes to come. Great night for Friday night football. There's a hint right there. We're gonna check in with Justin after the break. And welcome back, it's 541. Bars in Bear County are on the verge of being allowed to reopen after approval from County Judge Nelson Wolf. But this new reopening is causing many at the Bear County Courthouse to be frustrated. Yeah, right now, jury trials remain on hold, leaving remote hearings the only option for resolving cases. Here is our Paul Venema with what defense attorneys and some of their clients are saying. Though with limitations, bars are reopening and for some business appears to be improving. But for the courthouse, it still resembles a ghost town. Defense attorneys say that no trials here is frustrating for them and for their clients. He said, so wait a minute, the right to party is more important than my Sixth Amendment right to a speedy trial. But people go to bars voluntarily. Uh, Often people are in court because there's someone to be there. Shouldn't that be a consideration? Sure. And obviously, I'm not advocating that, you know, we just reopen the courthouse and have people in there, hundreds and hundreds of people, jurors or anything like that. He said that to him, this is about justice and fairness. When are we going to start uh, 
caring about people's liberties and people's rights. And, and it's the people that are charged with these crimes that I'm talking about. Local Administrative Judge Ron Renhell has explained since the beginning of the pandemic that it is the safety of jurors that concerns him. After all, he said, they're not there voluntarily. We want to go out of our way to ensure that public safety is first. Um, I think that's been our message from the beginning, and that's not going to stop. State of Texas versus Montreal Butler. Kuntz said that after eight months with only remote hearings going on here, everyone is frustrated. And I understand where the judges are coming from. I'm not upset with the judges. This is a, a shifting circumstance for everyone. A shifting circumstance that for now means they'll probably be doing more business here than at the courthouse. There are no jury trials scheduled there until next year. Paul Venom, a case at 12 News. Time check, 543, 75 degrees. And for the first time in 159 years, Santa Claus will not meet and greet children in Macy's in New York. That's still ahead on GMSA. Right now on KSAT.com, the San Antonio Zoo is hosting a fun event that will celebrate all the festivals you missed in 2020. On a Stick, Festivals You Missed will take place next month on November 6th, 7th, 8th, 13th, 14th, and 15th. The whole family can enjoy sweet and savory food items like chicken on a stick, turkey legs, corn on the cob, potato pancakes, and so much more. There will also be a night that is adult only. That's on November 5th. The San Antonio Zoo says there will be three festival areas, Fiesta, State Fair, and Croctoberfest. For more information about this event and ticket sales, just head to our website, ksat.com. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. In your morning, conservatives, Americans are expected to spend a little less this holiday season than in the past. That's according to a new survey from the National Retail Federation. They asked more than 7,600 consumers about their holiday shopping plans. Researchers found that on average, people planned on spending a little more than $997 on gifts, food, and other necessities for the holidays. That's about $50 less than last year. The NRF says it's mainly because people are hesitant to use seasonal sales and promotions to purchase items that will not be gifts. And it looks like even Santa will be doing Zoom meetings this Christmas. He will not be at Macy's famous Herald Square location in New York City this year. Now, for the first time in 159 years, Santa Claus will not meet and greet children at the department store. Macy's started the holiday tradition in 1861, but decided to make it virtual because of COVID-19. But as usual, he will hear the kids' holiday wishes uh, before taking a picture with them. But this time during a Zoom meeting, families will be able to download Download it immediately. This will all start after Thanksgiving. Let's download the latest traffic information immediately from our traffic expert. That'd be Officer Nick Solis. Thanks, Mark. Right now that accident there on I-10 East is cleared up. A little bit of traffic uh, debris still there in the roadway, but things still uh, look good now. I-10 East going eastbound from 1604 and on looks great if you're heading that way. Okay, let's take a look at the trans guide right now. We got 1604 and Kyle Sill. That's looking good right now, flowing smoothly. And 1604 military down the road there. That looks great as well. Uh, no traffic there. 1604 and Old Hausman. That looks good. So 1604 right there on the northwest side looking great. And let's switch it over to 410 and 151. That looks that's flowing smoothly as well. Thank you very much, Nick. And uh, we're about to experience some changes in temperatures around here. And keep in mind, we're facing a time change, not this weekend, but the following weekend. Halloween yeah. weekend. That, yes. that would be very nice. It's Halloween, full moon, and a time change. What else could you possibly want? <laughs> it's true. There's <laughs> so much going on, and now the weather starts getting active, too. So we, we got a lot to look at here in the seven-day forecast. Look at this roller coaster ride we're about to go on. Today is going to be warm. Tomorrow, quite a bit cooler. We're back up to the warmth on Sunday, then back down on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday look pretty chilly. Some chances of rain and then it warms back up from there. We'll see how things look for Halloween once we get a little bit closer. We're not quite there yet, but we'll see if uh, it does cool down again for Halloween. Uh, temperature wise, 72 Kerrville, 74 Uvalde, 76 in Pleasanton, 76 right now in Gonzales. So same old thing that we've been dealing with all week, heat and humidity to start. But today is a little different in the sense that we're going to get a cold front. This is expected to arrive early afternoon, bring some changes, gusty winds, cooler temperatures later this afternoon and this evening. Uh, the cool air behind it is starting to kick in. Lubbock, Amarillo, Amarillo's in the upper 30s now. Looks like this front's trying to move towards Midland. It may have progressed a little bit further south than what you see here. 55 in Wichita Falls, 
And as we look at the rainfall, there is a little bit with this front, not much. You find some showers and storms up around the Metroplex. And as it moves south, we're not expecting this to generate a ton of rain for us. There is an outside chance of a shower or storm, but right now we have it pegged at about 10%, may even go less than that. The dew points, and yeah, they're starting to fall with the front too. So you're seeing that drier air move south. Dew points are still in the 70s here, so it's still sticky. And that's why we're seeing a little bit of fog in spots, mainly down to the south and east of San Antonio. And there could be some of those drizzly showers we've seen the last couple days. 75 degrees south southeasterly winds at about 10 miles per hour at the airport. No gusts to speak of right now. And the future cast uh, does show a couple showers with this front. So this is around 4 o'clock. Maybe a broken line of some very light showers. I think best chance is probably east of San Antonio. And then even as we get into this evening, just a couple of showers there along the coast. But clouds do fill in. And tomorrow is going to be a fairly cloudy day, I think, at least to start. And then uh, you'll see maybe some clearing late in the day. Today, we built about 83 degrees. That's at 2 o'clock. That front comes through. And then by 4 o'clock, we're talking 70s and then eventually 60s by later this evening. And the breezy winds kick in. So you'll feel the difference for sure. You may not need the coat to start, but you may want it a little bit later today. That front comes through Saturday. We're talking about cloudy skies with some breaks by uh, Saturday uh, evening. And then here comes our next front. Some cooler air behind this one. This one, though, brings some rain chances with it. We'll have an upper level low coming through. Our rain chances look pretty good on Tuesday and Wednesday. Bottom line here, because we're post frontal Tuesday and Wednesday, it's going to be cloudy, cool, and somewhat damp. Rain chances will probably taper off late on Wednesday. So the seven day forecast shows 68 tomorrow, 85 on Sunday. There's your 20% chance of showers Monday, and then a 40% chance Tuesday and Wednesday, and much cooler highs in the 60s middle part of next week. I was just telling myself the other day, I'm kind of waiting for cloudy and cool, maybe a little drizzly, and it looks like it's uh, finally happening. on the board. Tuesday's yeah. your day. Thank okay. you yeah. very much. Uh, I'll complain about it later. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> 452, 75 degrees. And when using Zoom, you can choose your own backgrounds. We're going to introduce you to a dad in Iowa who has gone beyond the backgrounds by inventing Halloween costumes for his daughter. We're going to have the details next. But first, lotto numbers. Pick three, four, seven, five, fireball seven, daily four, zero, eight, six, zero, fireball five. Looking at cash five, we have six, 16, 20, 26, 34, and your Texas two step, nine, 17, 19, 23, bonus ball one. Coming up on GMA, we are breaking down that critical final face-off between President Trump and former Vice President Biden. Their last debate, just 11 days until final votes. The debate covered everything from the pandemic to immigration, race, and more. We'll tell you what it might mean for the state of the race, coming up right here on GMA. Since the start of the pandemic, many people have become experts with video conference calls. Greg Dietzenbach of Iowa created this Zoom-themed Halloween costume for his 12-year-old daughter. Can we pop it back up? All right, well, she's actually the other attendees on the call and created some fancy photo editing skills. Dietzenbach says he likes to come up with unique costumes each year, especially to get reactions from kids and other neighbors. Not sure what happened there, but it's going to be okay. Hey, coming up on GMSA, having a conversation about mental health can help your kids deal with their own mental health struggles. Later on GMSA, we'll go over productive ways to talk about this intimate subject. And Transguide, if you're headed out the door right now at 3 till, 1604 at Old Hausman's looking good. Traffic is building as it should at a very busy part of town. That was 410 at 151. There's 1604 at Calabria. We'll be back. A couple here on the far northeast side makes a startling discovery overnight. A motorcyclist in their kitchen. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about what happened. Coronavirus cases increasing across the country, including here in Texas. We'll get an update on the situation over in El Paso. And taking a look out with live cam, if you've been waiting for that cool front. Yay, it's happening today. <laughs> We're going to check in with Justin right now. Live from KSAT 12, 
Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. It's Friday, October 23rd. And let's get an update right now with meteorologist Justin Horn, who is in for Mike Osterhage, about not one, but two cold mm -hmm. fronts and a chance of rain. And a chance for rain. That comes next week. There's a slight chance with the front today, but the, the rain chances are pretty low. We're going to have to wait about eight more hours, guys, before that front comes through, and then we'll finally get some relief from this heat and humidity. Still pretty warm out there right now. 75 degrees at the airport, 72 Kerrville, 70 in Rock Springs. It, you won't need a coat, obviously, this morning, but a little bit later this afternoon or really this evening, once that front comes through, it will get a little bit chillier. We'll get some northerly wind gusts, and you'll feel the difference. That front right now is still up across parts of north Texas. It's 45 in Lubbock, 37 in Amarillo, just to give you an idea that this air mass behind the front is, is pretty chilly. And with this front, we're going to get some gusty winds, too. Starting to see some pretty good wind gusts from Midland and Abilene. We should see some gusts out of the north. 30 miles per hour once this front comes through. And right now we're thinking about 2 or 3 o'clock is when this front will arrive. There is a little bit of rain across the Red River, uh, Dallas, between Dallas and Oklahoma City. For us, the rain chances are really pretty low. We could see a stray shower or two today, as we mentioned, uh, but we're talking about a 10% chance here. So 83, 2 o'clock, that's when we peak, and then temperatures will drop off into the 60s tonight. And that's when uh, we really start to feel the difference. Mostly cloudy skies through much of today and then tomorrow has potential to be a little bit chilly too. We're going to talk more about that weekend forecast here in just a bit, but we got to get over to Nick and look at the roads. I see a lot of green over there. That's good news. Yeah, definitely a lot of good news, Justin. Uh, no accidents right now to report. Uh, minimal construction according to Transguide. Things are looking good out here. Now we do have a little heavy pocket of traffic. It's going to be North Loop 1604 East going southbound there in Converse towards uh, I-10. Just keep that in mind if you are heading in that direction. Uh, other than that, things are looking good. Just look at these drive times. If you're eastbound IH-10 from FM 46 to 1604, you got a 39 minute ride, which is good. It's a good time there. And then you got I-10 eastbound from the northwest side of 16 to 4 to 35, 12 minutes, still looking good there as well. All right, 35 at Topper Wine on the north side looks great. 1604 at Kyle Seal, not C, that looks good. And 1604 at Military Drive is looking smooth as can be. All right, everyone, please remember, wear your seatbelt and get to work safely. Mark Stephanie, back to you. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Nick. A deadly crash has hit especially close to home for a couple on the far northeast side. Police say a motorcyclist died after crashing right through their front door. Our Katrina Weber is live where it happened on Dolente Road near Nacogdoches. Any word on what that biker, uh, how, what made that biker lose control, Katrina? Well, that's probably one of the things that police are still investigating. We can only assume what happened. Uh, it looks like this street right here dead ends at Dolente, and maybe the biker missed a cur uh, turn here and then went right through that house. Now, right now, there are boards on the door. You really can't notice a whole lot of damage in the dark, but we do have some video to perhaps give you a closer up look. This happened around midnight. The police say that the couple who lives in this house told them that the biker suddenly crashed through their front door and ended up in their kitchen. That is after he went through the front door, then through an AC closet and then into the kitchen. That's where he landed along with his motorcycle. Uh, he did die here at the scene. Uh, police, again, still investigating this crash to see exactly what happened. Uh, but the couple now left with quite a big mess uh, to clean up a lot of repairs to make here. Reporting live on the far northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. The final presidential debate is in the books, and it was a big difference from the first debate. President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden answered questions related to the pandemic, health care, the economy, and climate change. Last night offered voters a debate that highlighted the two candidates' differences. In our next half hour, we will hear what each candidate said on some of the biggest topics of the night. Turning to the pandemic, local health officials reporting 207 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County and no new deaths. However, the impact of the pandemic is starting to slowly increase. The seven day moving average now 168 cases per day. And right now, 209 patients are hospitalized. Only 9% of staffed hospital beds are available in Bear County. We'll get another update this evening in the daily briefing. Across the country, COVID-19 cases and deaths continue to increase. There are more than 76,000 cases reported nationwide just yesterday alone, which is one of the highest daily totals so far. And even though rural areas are seeing faster growth rates and cases per capita, cities are also facing some troublesome increases. Here's ABC's Faith Abube. This morning, hot spots across the country, bringing hospitals to the brink. I have 
great fears that we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg. Despite remdesivir's newly approved status as a COVID treatment, doctors say many patients are still ending up critically ill. For the first time as a physician, I'm scared to see what's to come. In Utah, ICUs filling up with COVID patients as the state sees a record number of new cases. I don't know what else we could do other than the plan we have here now. In Ohio, the governor says infections are reaching new highs every day. What is most scary about this is that it does not seem like we're even starting to get to a plateau. It just goes up and up. In El Paso, Texas, daily cases, they're spiking nearly 450 percent since October 1st. We're seeing it in children. Meanwhile, schools in the east are battling new outbreaks. More than 200 students and teachers in Massachusetts tested positive for the virus in the last week. I was nervous, but like mostly for like the blood test. It comes as Pfizer becomes the only company to include children in its phase three vaccine testing. 12-year-old Abinov receiving his first injection of either vaccine or placebo. For me, um, I think that it's like pretty cool to like participate in this like research study. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home, the University of the Incarnate Word is expanding its campus in a medically underserved community on the south side. It's one of the many new additions coming to the Brooks community. UIW will now occupy seven buildings at Brooks. The School of Osteopathic Medicine has been there for more than four years. Second year medical student Andrew Tobias says he is excited about the new changes. I am so excited to see when our school just continues to grow and we continue to make these connections in the south side. Brooks is growing in other industries as well. With more than 40 businesses, there are more than 6,000 jobs in that area. Time check, 607, still 75 degrees. And many of our past times have had to change during the pandemic and now a popular Christmas show is changing the performance for the holiday season. Find out which band will host a virtual show this December. Having an open, age-appropriate conversation about home, at home about mental health can help your kids after the break. We'll see how you can have those talks in a productive way. And taking a look out with live cam this morning, 75 degrees for now, but we are looking forward to great football weather. You might even want to take a light jacket tonight. We're going to check in with Justin after the break. Case at 12 presents another Day of the Dead story. Cemeteries can be sad, somber places, but throughout Mexico, they are instead places of comfort and culture. The cemetery, or Panteón as it's known in Spanish, is an important place for families to celebrate their lost loved ones. Each gravesite is an individual expression holding mementos, personal items, decorations, and gifts to commemorate a life now gone. From large cities to small rural areas, each Panteon may look a little different, but their characteristics are quite similar. The tributes at each tombstone are grand and beautiful, providing a celebratory spirit to one's final resting place. In the days leading up to Day of the Dead, these memorials hold even greater significance as family members gather to welcome the souls of the departed back home. The yearly ritual is more than a celebration of life, but also a celebration of culture and family and a tradition that continues to live on. The way you behave and interact with your kids plays a huge role in their mental health, and this year has made it difficult for many of us to hold it together. According to Marcy Burstein, a clinical psychologist at the National Institute of Mental Health, there is a long established relationship between parent and child mental health problems. So here are some important things to keep in mind. Clinical psychologists at the National Institute of Mental Health say children of parents with anxiety disorders are four to six times more likely to develop an anxiety disorder in their lifetime. 
They also say children of parents suffering from depression are three to four times more likely to develop depression in their life. Researchers say as soon as a baby is born, they look up to their parents. They pick up on verbal and nonverbal cues and pay attention more than you think. But this doesn't mean you always need to be calm. Experts say it's good to acknowledge your feelings with your kids as long as it's done in an appropriate manner. It's also important to have conversations with your kids about anxiety and depression. Experts say it can normalize feelings and show children that it's okay to acknowledge and express those feelings. These conversations will benefit your kids in the long run by teaching them how to deal with hard feelings on their own. And experts also say being open with your kids by having these kinds of conversations can help them have a better understanding. Yeah, and you guys do a great job of talking to Rooney. We, we try. We try to explain everything. Sometimes I feel like we're over explaining things, but. Eh. Wouldn't you rather over explain a little than, than worry about, uh, you know? This is true. Mm -hmm. This is true. Right now, 614, let's check traffic with Officer Nick Solis. Uh, there's not much going on right now, Mark. Things are looking good out there. No construction, uh, no accidents, a lot of green there. Uh, heavy pocket of traffic on 35, on 1604 South going towards Converse. That's no longer there. So things looking good if you're headed out to work this morning. You got time to stop for a donut or a kolache or put some gas, something, because it does look good out there. Let's go straight to the Trans Guide. 1604 at Old Hosman looks good. 410 and 151, even better. Look at that. Flowing smoothly, picking up a little bit, but that's normal. And 16 1604 in Calabria. That ah, looks great too there in Alamo Ranch. Like the options. Donut, donut or, kolache. or kolaches. Yeah, I gotta, On I gotta, a Friday. Gotta yeah. hit them all there. Yeah. Mm. We love that. Or oh, breakfast taco. Thank yeah, you. I should have said that. Yeah. <laughs> That's good too. More options. What do you have for us this morning, Justin? I feel like every time I work with Nick, he brings up kolaches and, and donuts. <laughs> it's really tough to work with that. Mm -hmm. There is a reoccurring theme here. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Recurring uh, theme, rather. <laughs> uh, we're looking forward to a cold front this afternoon. And uh, it's going to bring some cooler temperatures. Here's a look at the headlines. We'll get the clouds to stick around tomorrow. It's going to be a little bit cooler on your Saturday. And then some morning clouds on Sunday, but much warmer. So the weekend, it's going to be uh, cold or cooler one day and then pretty warm the next. Just a heads up there. And uh, even this afternoon, you may want the jacket as temperatures start to cool down. I know it doesn't feel like it right now. 75 degrees at the airport. South southeasterly winds at about 8 miles per hour. It's still warm and humid. 73 junctions, 70 Rock Springs, 75 in Gonzales. We've been through this all week. These are still warm numbers in the morning, uh, but those changes are just to our north. There is the front. It is now through Midland and Abilene. Temperatures now in the 50s there, and then 40s and 30s up in the Texas Panhandle. There is some pretty chilly air behind this frontal boundary, and that's why I think tomorrow uh, could be a little bit cooler potentially, especially if the clouds hang around, and it looks like they might. Uh, showers and storms up around Dallas, Fort Worth. Some pretty good thunderstorms, in fact. That's starting to move into the Metroplex. It'd be nice if they shared some of that rain with us, but it doesn't look like it's in the cards today. It looks like most of the rain is going to stay off to our east and northeast. That's where more of the energy is. That's not to say we couldn't get a shower, but I don't think it's going to be significant rain. Dew points will fall off if you're tired of the humidity. We do have some drier air behind this front, too. Dew points in the 20s and 30s. We'll probably see those dew points fall into the 40s by later tonight into tomorrow. Right now, though, we still got dew points in the 70s. It's still sticky out there, and that's leading to a little bit of patchy fog, especially along the coast, places like Victoria and Bevo. Visibility may come down briefly this morning. Wind speeds, they're not so bad right now, but by 3 o'clock, once that front starts to move in, we'll see some winds sustained 20, 25 miles per hour in some cases, and then gusts up to 30 miles per hour. So it is going to get fairly uh, breezy, if not windy in, in some cases, as we get into later this evening and tonight. Now, overnight, those winds will start to calm a little bit more. Uh, but uh, just a heads up, it is going to be breezy later today. As far as the rainfall is concerned, this computer model just doesn't generate a lot of rain. Uh, again, 10% chance of rain, I think, today with this front. Uh, there could be a little bit better chance to get closer to the coast. And then notice tomorrow the cloud cover hangs around. This is Saturday morning, 7 o'clock. It's probably going to hang around at least through lunchtime. And when you get those cloud decks, after a front moves through, typically doesn't warm up all that much. So that's why we're thinking upper 60s tomorrow. Uh, today, sort of a roller coaster ride here. We're going to build up to about 83 degrees. That's by 2 o'clock. And then you'll see those temperatures fall off behind this front. And we'll dip into the 60s by this evening. Breezy conditions. And skies will probably still be mostly cloudy. Down the line, this is our first front. We've got a second one that's going to move through. Sunday, as I mentioned, it'll be a warm day. There's the second front. Slides through Monday. Timing is still a little bit in question there, but behind the front, we'll get the gusty ones yet again. Clouds fill in. 
showers and maybe some snow up in the Texas Panhandle. And then Tuesday is the day where I think our rain chances really do improve. We've got an upper level low out west. We're behind the front. We get the overrunning situation. It's pretty classic overrunning situation. So I think Tuesday has potential to be damp and cool. That'll probably be the case Wednesday too before this system passes by and we get some clearing late on Wednesday. So 7 day forecast shows 68 tomorrow. Cloudy to start. Maybe a few breaks in those clouds late in the day. Then 85 Sunday, our warmest day. Cold front slides through on Monday. Turns breezy and much cooler on Tuesday. 40% chance of showers both Tuesday and Wednesday. And that'll keep numbers down into the 60s. And then we'll warm up later next week, guys. That is an anything but boring forecast. Yeah. This is true. Things are getting <laughs> a little more active. When he's sitting at his desk working on the forecast, it's like he's playing chess. He's like... <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> What's the next hmm. move? I right? come extra what early this there. Morning. Yeah. Yeah. I want to thank you very much for the extra effort, Justin. We appreciate it. 619, 75 degrees. And coming up on GMSA, we're going to take a look at a four year old deposition of Jeffrey Epstein's friend, Jelay Maxwell, who has been released despite Maxwell's legal challenges. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Instantly clear everyday congestion with Vic Sinex Saline Nasal Mist. For drug-free relief that works fast. Vic Sinex, instantly clear everyday congestion. I left the military with a traumatic brain injury. I came home to fight depression, anxiety, and alcohol. As America's veterans face challenges, DAV is there. I'm Madam Greathouse, Army veteran. DAV helps veterans get the benefits they've earned. With DAV's help, I've built a new life for myself. With the right support, more veterans can reach victories great and small. My victory is just experiencing life. Support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. When they're sick, they get comfortable anywhere and spread germs everywhere. Wherever they rest, protection. Nothing kills more viruses, including the COVID-19 virus, on more surfaces than Lysol disinfectant spray. Lysol, what it takes to protect. In this morning's GMA First Look, after months of fighting to keep depositions sealed this morning, newly unsealed testimony gives a glimpse of what Ghislaine Maxwell said under oath in 2016, repeatedly denying any knowledge or participation in convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein's alleged sexual abuse of teenage girls. Barry Levine, author of The Spider, Inside the Criminal Web of Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell, has been investigating the allegations at the heart of these cases and says Epstein needed the help of someone like Maxwell to earn the trust of his alleged victims. They were able to present themselves, uh, particularly to young women and their families, um, in the sense that they appeared as a loving young couple. We'll have much more on these depositions coming up at 7 a.m. Plus, Dan Abrams weighs in live. With your GMA First Look, I'm Adrienne Bankert, ABC News, New York. A band's holiday tradition is going virtual this year. The Trans-Siberian Orchestra plans to stream its holiday performance, Christmas Eve, and other stories live in concert. The group usually puts on around 120 live shows for about a million bands, sometimes with two shows a day. But the pandemic has put a stop to most live performances. The virtual performance is set to take place online on December 18th. Tickets for the show are on sale right now for $30 a seat on the band's website. And Morty Sports High School football continues with our big game coverage. Here's a look at a game we followed last night. Johnson and Brandeis playing each other for the first time in the same division after a UIL realignment put the school two schools in the same district. Johnson would score first on this run play and go on to win their first ever meeting 19 to 7. High school football games continue tonight. You've seen highlights from all the big games at big game coverage page of KSAT. 
Com. Moving the NFL, Cowboys play this weekend, taking on their division rival, the Washington football team in the nation's capital. Kickoff is scheduled for Sunday at noon. Texans also play Sunday, They're taking on one of the top teams in the league, the Green Bay Packers. This game is scheduled to kick off at noon on Sunday over in Houston. World Ser Series continues tonight in Arlington between the Dodgers and the Rays. The series tied at a game apiece after the Rays won the matchup Wednesday night. Even though both teams will not play in home stadiums, the Rays will now be the home team for the next three games. That means they'll get the benefit of batting last in the ninth inning. First pitch scheduled for just after 7 o'clock tonight. Interesting. Tied for now. Mm -hmm. For now. Time now is 625 and 75 degrees. Final debate for the 2020 election season is now in the rearview mirror. And our next half hour, we'll hear what President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden said about some important topics impacting our nation. We're also going to look at ways to discuss mental health with your children, which may help them get over their own mental health struggles. And how much of a struggle is your morning commute going to be? If you're leaving in the next 10 or 15 minutes, Officer Nick Solis will steer you clear of some trouble spots. We'll be right back. San Antonio police say a motorcyclist has died after leaving the road and ending up in someone's kitchen here on the far northeast side. I'm Katrina Weber, I'll have that story. A more calm but attack-fueled debate. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington with details of the final presidential debate just ahead. And we have been waiting all week long to get a fine-tuned forecast on these cold fronts, we have a better idea of when front number one of this week is going to arrive. Justin Horn will have the very latest in just a sec. Good morning. It is Friday, October 23rd. We are excited about cold front number one for football, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Let's get the uh, very latest from Justin. And you've got more on front one and front two. And yeah, yeah. Th there'll be more this winter, too. We yeah. should see some more fronts. But these first couple of fronts are going to be good for us. Uh, really cooling us down later this afternoon and this evening and then another one next week, which brings some rain chances with it. Visibility starting to come down a little bit. Beeville to Victoria, we're seeing some fog. Not an issue here in San Antonio, but just heads up across some of our southeastern counties. You may see that fog build in. It's still warm and humid out there. Not a lot of rain on the radar. We're not expecting a whole lot to today. Just a couple showers here and there. But as you go north, notice we got some thunderstorms up here around Dallas. That is along that cold front, which is starting to bring in some much, much cooler air to the Texas Panhandle, along with some gusty winds. Winds right now gusting over 30 miles per hour in Lubbock, Abilene, Midland is close to 30 miles per hour there. That's what we have to look forward to. It is going to get breezy this evening once this front works through. So what time will it arrive? We think sometime early afternoon. So 2, 3 o'clock, this front's sliding through. Uh, San Antonio will peak at about 2 o'clock, 83 degrees, but watch the temperatures really fall off by 5 o'clock, 8 o'clock. We're into the 60s. Those winds pick up, and tomorrow's going to be fairly chilly. We're going to see clouds hanging around through much of uh, tomorrow, and that'll keep temperatures potentially in the 60s for highs. We'll have much more on the weekend forecast here in just a second, but let's get over to Nick now and look at the traffic. Hasn't been so bad this morning. Hasn't been bad at all. Just we're up to a good start on Friday. And it's always good because uh, Friday is usually the worst traffic day. So today, take advantage of it. Uh, leave on time. You don't have to rush to work. Put some gas. Things are looking good all around the city. Just look at these drive times right now. I-10 westbound from the northwest side, I-35 to 1604. You got an 11-minute ride. And if you're I-10 eastbound from the northwest side of 1604 to I-35, you got a 12-minute ride. So pretty good there. All right, trans guide time. 1604 military looking good. Should give me the whole 1604 loop. Let's see. 1604 at Old Houseman. That's looking good right there on the northwest military on the northwest side. And 410 at 151. Traffic picking up a little bit on those north and southbound lanes, but still not bad at all. All right, everyone, have a great day. Mark, Stephanie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. San Antonio police are trying to figure out what went wrong for a motorcyclist on the far northeast side. He died after crashing into a home in the neighborhood off of Nacogdoches Road outside of Loop 1604. Our Katrina Weber is there now with a live report. Now, as you mentioned earlier, the biker didn't just hit the home. He actually ended up inside. Well, that's right, right in the kitchen to be uh, specific. Now, police say that that took the couple who was inside there by complete surprise. The motorcyclist, unfortunately, did die here at the scene. Uh, it also caused a bit of damage to this house. Right now, they have the front door, what used to be the front door, all boarded up. 
Uh, this happened around midnight, and we have some video to show you, in fact, so you can actually see the damage as it happened. Police say that uh, the, the biker, for some reason, lost control, went through the front door of this house, through a, an AC closet, and then ended up in the kitchen uh, to the surprise of the couple inside. And again, they say the biker did die here at the scene. We haven't heard any information, any personal information about him. Also, police still trying to figure out uh, what went wrong. But from what we can see, this street uh, appears to be a dead end right here into Dolente, which is the street where the house is. Looks like he hit the dead end and possibly missed making a turn here and then going right into that house. But police are still investigating. Reporting live on the far northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. President Trump and former Vice President Biden went head to head in their second and final presidential debate last night. And many agree it was a more conventional debate than the candidates' chaotic first meeting. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with a breakdown of the key moments. Good morning. It was more civil and more substantive, but it couldn't have painted a more stark difference between the two candidates. The final presidential debate opening with one of the biggest issues facing this country a virus that's ravaged the economy and killed more than 222,000 Americans in just seven months. I say we're learning to live with it. We have no choice. We can't lock ourselves up in a basement like Joe does. People are learning to die with it. Anyone who's responsible for that many deaths should not remain as president of the United States of America. The president defending his handling of the pandemic while painting a rosy picture at odds with what the data shows. It will go away, and as I say, we're rounding the turn, we're rounding the corner. We're about to go into a dark winter, a dark winter, and he has no clear plan. The relatively calmer debate, noticeably low on interruptions, but just as high on attacks. On the economy, Trump insisting he's better for the job. If he gets in, you will have a depression, the likes of which you've never seen. Your 401ks will go to hell. What is on the ballot here is the character of this country. In their closing arguments, Trump telling voters economic success will unify the nation. Biden saying, if elected, he would represent every American and address systemic racism. I think I have great relationships with all people. I am the least racist person in this room. Abraham Lincoln here is one of the most racist presidents we've had in modern history. He pours fuel on every single racist fire. And both candidates are back on the campaign trail today. Joe Biden will be stumping in Delaware while Trump heads to Florida. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. I want to let you know right now at KSAT.com, we have all the resources you need to review the final presidential debate. One of those is a fact checker on claims made by both candidates. It reviews statements ranging from health care to taxes, coronavirus and connections to foreign countries. Early voting continues in Bear County today. Yesterday, more than 34,000 people cast their ballots. That means more than 360,000 people have already voted in person in Bear County. The Bear County Elections Office reporting it has processed 62,000 mail-in ballots this week as well. If you are looking to vote early, the polls are open from 8 to 8 today and tomorrow and from noon to 6 on Sunday. Next week, those hours will be expanded. Polls will be open from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day until early voting ends on October 30th. Election day is November 3rd. As Bear County voters take advantage of early voting at a near record pace, many may be on the hunt for the shortest line at polling locations around town. Move Texas and Iris developed an app called Move the Line. It allows users to track wait times and share it with other voters. And the app does not need to be used on just a phone. You can also access it via computer. Also doesn't require a download. It's free to use and access. You can find a link and more information on all the other voting stories right now on the Vote 2020 page of KSAT.com. In other headlines this morning, Estes Park, Colorado, the gateway to Rocky Mountain National Park, has been evacuated due to wildfires in the region. The Denver Post reports that the East Troublesome Fire grew more than 100,000 acres, becoming the second largest wildfire in Colorado history. It also reports the fire has a chance of merging with the Cameron Peak Fire, which is the largest fire in state history. The Post is reporting that both wildfires have burned into Rocky Mountain National Park. A California appeals court ruled that rideshare companies like Uber and Lyft must reclassify drivers as employees. That means they would be eligible for benefits like minimum wage, overtime, paid sick leave and unemployment insurance. 
In response, Uber and Lyft are trying to get a ballot measure passed in California that would exempt them from the law. The companies can also make an appeal all the way to the California Supreme Court. Today is a deadline. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin set to reach a new coronavirus stimulus deal. Both are working to reach a compromise on how much money the federal government should spend to help with economic relief during the pandemic. Meanwhile, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says the White House should not make a deal with Democrats because it could split Republican voters in the upcoming election. Keeping with the pandemic, some Bear County bars say they will reopen. County Judge Nelson Wolf issued an executive order which allowed hundreds of bars to reopen with additional health and safety requirements. But despite the order, Judge Wolf says only 25 will do so. Frank Uresti says his dream became a reality when he owned, opened Frankie Diablo's on the south side five years ago. But he closed the bar for good in mid-July and doesn't see it ever reopening. It got to the point where it was just... We just couldn't do it anymore. We tried to do it as best as we could. Nobody wants to see a door close, but I mean, another shall open. I mean, we just got to see where it leads. Bear County Commissioners approved a $4 million grant that will go towards areas hard hit bar and restaurant industry. Flu season is here, which means it's time for flu shots. KSET is teaming up with our community partners for several drive through flu shot events. The first is happening tomorrow at Southwest ISD Stadium from 8 a.m. until noon. You will need to make an appointment and most major insurance plans will be accepted. We're going to have all the dates and the information on our website at ksetcommunity.com. And real quick, a tip on early voting. We've heard that Northwest Vista College is a good spot to go over to. Not a lot of traffic some days. And that's good. And so you have today tomorrow till yeah. 8 and then Sunday shorter shorter That's period like of time noon to 6 and the to next six. week we've got through 10 p.m. so you got time yes yeah, so we'll keep you po posted on the on all those times and dates uh, as we normally do 639 75 degrees and working from home for so long has become a burden for a lot of people after the break we're going to look at some simple things you can do to reduce your stress while trying to do your job from home Right now on KSAT.com, a reminder for parents who may need some child care help on Election Day. Care.com is partnering with the Armed Services YMCA to provide free child care services. Two San Antonio locations will be providing the service, the Mays Family YMCA at Potenko Road and the Thousand Oaks Family YMCA. So here's how it works. You log on to asymca.org slash vote and reserve a free four hour spot for your child. On election day, parents just drop off your kiddo and go vote. Now we have more information about this service in our Vote 2020 section, even the link on where to register. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Well, many are feeling the strain when it comes to working from home. Lots of employees have noticed a huge change in eating, sleeping, and working habits as a result. But as GMSA producer Jared Hoeing shows us, there are some key things you can do to reduce your work from home stress. Working from home so much is burning people out when it comes to job performance. So the University of Michigan Health System has offered several ways you can get some much-needed mental relief. First, switch to phone calls instead of video conferences. Yes, many people are tired of Zoom calls. So take a break from your normal on-screen discussions and just focus on someone's voice instead of trying to monitor how you look and what's in your background at the same time. Next, reduce multitasking. Health experts say change your way of thinking and be more mindful on focusing one task at a time. Close out applications and tabs you really don't need at the moment, and even put your phone out of reach for a little while. Cutting out distractions can help you concentrate on an activity and get it done correctly and more efficiently. Third, schedule fewer meetings. Make sure that meetings that were organized before COVID hit are still relevant. And health experts say try substituting those long meetings with just a simple email instead. You'll be saving yourself and your coworkers a lot of extra time and energy. Also, take micro breaks. Sometimes all it takes is a few moments to walk away from your computer, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and reset your thinking. Reward yourself with some coffee or another refreshing beverage. Also, taking a quick walk outside can get your body and mind working better again. Finally, stick to your pre-COVID working and sleep routine. If you do this, you can more easily switch between home into work mode. Experts say when possible, put away your computer or other work materials when you're finished for the day. That will help you set up boundaries between work and personal time. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Jared Hoeing.
Also a stress reliever, Jared's voice. Yes, uh, very soothing. You can easily sell an app. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Jared, yeah, yes. Yeah, very soothing voice, uh, especially when he talks about, you know, all hex breaking loose, he's in our ear, everything's gonna be he's fine. He's very guys. calm. Yeah. Thank you, Jared. And Jared, we trust. Let's check traffic right now. Here is Officer Nick Solis. Yeah, Mark, right now things are looking good. If you're at the gym right now, you got to you got a time to do that extra set because uh, things are looking good right in the roadways. You don't have to rush to work right now. Everything's looking good. Look at this right now. 35 at Topper 1 on the north side, flowing very smoothly. That looks good. 1604 in Kyle Sill, looking great right there. No accidents, no construction. 1604 military looking good as well. So a really, really a smooth Friday. First one in a long time we've had with hardly any accidents or construction. Nick, I liked on how the last cut in, you said we had time for a donut and a kolache, and now you're saying we have time for an extra set at the gym. It's because very I, good I, balance. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I wanted Justin to remember me as a, you know, more exercise and more, you know, my diet. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be honest, I, I like the donut and kolache idea better. <laughs> just saying. Me too. I mean, let's just be totally honest. <laughs> hey, All right. Time for a Friday football forecast, Justin. Yeah, it's, uh, it's looking a little chilly tonight. Uh, we're going to see the winds kick in. So those field goals, they may be a little difficult a little bit later tonight when the winds get gusty. And uh, I didn't kick that time. I like I pulled a hammy last time. Was you pulled dangerous. a hammy? I may have. I'm really out of shape. I should be doing more sets. <laughs> uh, 64 degrees kickoff. We'll be down to 61 at halftime. Sunset is at 655. Northerly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. Cooler and breezy. So take a jacket with you when you go tonight. I know it doesn't feel that way right now, but it will later today once this front comes through. 73 Junction, 72 Fredericksburg, 75 right now in Austin. There is the front though, 54 Abilene, 53 Midland. So we know it's trucking south here and we can actually see it on the, uh, the, the radar and satellite picture. I'll zoom in a little bit closer here, right there. It's just north of San Angelo and it's moving pretty quick. It's a little bit ahead of schedule. So we'll have to watch the timing with this. I still think probably lunchtime just after lunch is when we can expect this to move through San Antonio. Right now, 75 degrees. We are reporting a little bit of light rain at the airport, some drizzle, and that certainly is possible through the morning time. Southerly winds at about nine miles per hour, and the dew points are high enough for that in the low 70s right now. We've even got some mid 70s on the map, so you know it's sticky out there, and it'll be a humid start. But the good news, that drier air funnels in behind the cold front, so tomorrow those dew points will be much, much lower. Wind speeds. Again, not bad right now, but the front is going to pick the winds up too. Uh, wind speeds 23 miles per hour. This is around 3 o'clock, by the way, today. 20 mile per hour wind speeds in Kerrville. And then you'll see a pickup even more here around San Antonio. Sustained somewhere around 10 to 20 gusts up to 30 miles per hour. So the northerly winds will really kick in and then they'll die down some tonight. Here's how we think temperatures will pan out. 79 noontime up to 83 by 2 o'clock, depending on the timing of that front, of course and then they'll fall off behind the front pretty quickly. 74, 4 o'clock down into the 60s this evening and then becoming breezy. There is an outside chance for shower too as this front comes through. There's the first front. We're behind it tomorrow. We've got some clouds that'll hang around. So that's gonna keep things kind of cool on your Saturday, mostly cloudy, maybe some breaks late in the afternoon. Sunday starts off cloudy and then we break out into some sun. Sunday's gonna be our warmest day, but here comes our next front. So our roller coaster ride continues here. Um, by Friday, uh, Monday, I should say, 5 o'clock, we've got some showers behind this front, cloudy skies, it'll be much cooler, breezy winds, cold enough for some wintry weather in the panhandle. And then I think Tuesday, our rain chances probably peak here, Tuesday night into Wednesday as an upper level low comes in. And with us being behind that front, it's going to be cloudy, somewhat damp and cool. So Tuesday and Wednesday are going to feel a lot like fall. And we could actually pick up some a measurable rainfall, which is exactly what we need. It's been so long since we've got any good rain here. So this is looking better. This is Wednesday at five o'clock, still showing some rain. And then I think we probably clear out on Thursday. So here's the seven day forecast. 68 tomorrow, mostly cloudy. 85 on Sunday, 20% chance of showers Monday as the front comes through. And then 60s Tuesday and Wednesday, both with a 40% chance of rain. Guys, it's good that we'll see rain as well. Not only the cold front. Exactly. Take, and take all of it. 650 right now, 75 degrees. And flu season is upon us, but it may be difficult to tell if your symptoms are the flu or COVID-19. Tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to go over some of the difference between the two. Outside with live cam, news you need to know before you go is coming up right here on Good Morning San Antonio.
Coming up on GMA, we are breaking down that critical final face-off between President Trump and former Vice President Biden. Their last debate, just 11 days until final votes. The debate covered everything from the pandemic to immigration, race, and more. We'll tell you what it might mean for the state of the race coming up right here on GMA. People in this northeast side home never saw it coming, but a motorcycle ended up in their kitchen. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. San Antonio police say the biker did die as a result of this crash. They found him and his motorcycle in the kitchen of this home on Delente Road, which is off Nacogdoches, right outside Loop 1604. Police say the biker somehow lost control around midnight, crashed through the front door, then through an AC closet, and landed in the kitchen, catching the couple by surprise. Well, they have boards up here where their front door used to be. Uh, police are still investigating exactly what went wrong. But from what we can see, this is a, a dead end here off of this road leading right to their street. It looks like the biker may have missed making a turn. Reporting from the far northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Coming up today on GMSA at Night, a new book catching the attention of Selena fans, especially of those in the San Antonio area. The book title Simplemente Selena, or Simply Selena, was written by a Castroville author and illustrated by an eighth grader in Divine. Alicia Pereira told us about her role in making this story come to life at 9 after Good Morning America. Let's go ahead and take one last look at traffic with Officer Nick Solis. All right, right now, no accidents to report, but we do have one here. It's going to be, or I'm sorry, we have one accident. It looks like an 18, involving an 18-wheeler here on Highway 16 and Mansion Drive. Get you more updates on that when I can, uh, causing a little bit to moderate traffic right now. Justin? Thank you, sir. We've got some uh, cloudy skies out there, a little bit of drizzle and spots, a little bit of fog down to the south and east. We'll get a front coming through today. It looks like just after lunchtime, it'll turn breezy and cooler by the evening. Yes, we'll top out at 84, but you'll see those temperatures tumble into the 60s later tonight. And then 60s tomorrow, mostly cloudy. 85 on Sunday. It does get warmer. And then uh, look for another front Monday, and that uh, will cool us down yet again and bring some good rain chances with it. Looks like Tuesday and Wednesday highs in the 60s. I, I'd like to end on a funny note. I saw a meme yesterday that was good. It says, anyone else feel like Halloween's unnecessary this year? I've been wearing a mask and eating candy for seven months now. I don't think I need a day dedicated to it anymore. Very true. Have a great day, guys.